Hearing the words, she needs palliative care, wasn't what I expected back in March 2015. To be honest, I was naive and didn't quite grasp what it meant, nor was it what you ever expect or want to hear. Well, that's why I'm here today, as my beloved Nan passed away at Loros in April of that year. Loros quite quickly became my Nan's choice. Initially, she wanted to be at home, but it became quite apparent that this wasn't an option. And to be honest, I'm glad. Mainly because after I visited, our fears of what was to come quickly became distanced thoughts. As she did feel at home, she did feel safe and cared for. She settled in quickly, well we all did, and became fond of the wonderful staff working around us. Nan was particularly fond of a very handsome doctor who visited her on his rounds, and of course wasn't disappointed and was disappointed when it wasn't him. She was very sociable and even in her last few weeks thrived in the environment at Loros. She found her angels without wings in her nurses, caterers, doctors, you name it. And she loved how everyone made time for her, something that she needed and they all knew that. Nan also needed calm to help process what was happening and Helen, the chaplain at the time, became her confidant, providing serenity and keeping her as positive as possible. I'm not particularly religious, but I too found this invaluable, especially during the darker times. In saying that, it was often hard to feel too dark and gloomy in Loros, which sounds odd saying out loud and knowing what we went through, but it's true. Loros is just so wonderful. I have lots of memories of the time spent there with my nan, and so many are positive. <clears throat> like watching the birds feed on the table through the window in nan's room. Something that we enjoyed most when the robins came. Robins have sentimental meaning for us, and when we sat and watched a lone robin swing, swing, singing away, we took comfort in thinking that it was my granddad, visiting her before they were to meet again. My nan was our anchor. She kept us stable, and she still is, so we're really keen to give her some special memories while she was in Loros, and how fortunate we were that we were supported fully. This even meant bringing a live band in one evening. Don't worry. It was only an a cappella group. They say that it was four men who didn't need microphones. We took over the social area so we could all fit in, family, friends and some staff too. This was an emotional evening for me, as I sat listening to the circle of life with my nan gripping at my hand, knowing I wouldn't get many more chances like this. Without Loros, I fear I wouldn't have had this evening, made that memory or cherished it, and I'll be forever grateful. The thing is, these things happen regularly at Loros, I just didn't know. And to be honest, I didn't know much about Loros at all. And I think it's true for a lot of people in our community. And the community is so important for Loros to keep it going, through fundraising, shopping at local shops, which my nan used to love doing, especially at the hospice shop, and kitting out my then six month old Fleur in blankets. And of course, volunteering. Again, something my nan told the Loros staff I'd be keen to do. I mean, she was right, but starting off by signing me up for the Leicester Half Marathon wasn't fun. Yes, I ran it that October, begrudgingly, but raised over £1,000. But obviously, not all the time at Loros was filled with happiness. My nan sadly passed away on the 23rd of April, one day after my 28th birthday, which she'd promised she'd make, and it was almost like she could let go, knowing she'd kept her promise. She always was a stubborn dragon a nickname my dad gave her, seeing as she was Welsh. Laros made it comfortable for my nan and able for us all to be there for her. And when I say all, I really mean it. Her four children and their partners, her nine grandchildren and some of their partners, and even some great-grandchildren too. Imagine having so many people there anywhere else. Me neither. I found her passing a little too difficult and had a panic, a panic attack. And although I clearly wasn't the patient, I was completely cared for too. A nurse brought me some water and sat me down whilst Helen again came to the rescue, helping, to try, helping me try to come to terms with my loss. That day I lost a part of me. I didn't explain before, but she was more than just my nan. She lived with my family at weekends and on all occasions for the last 11 years of her life, becoming a second mum at times. 
She was bossy, outspoken, but amazing. And we wanted the best for her, and I know we got it. But the incredible thing is, is that that year my nan wasn't the only person receiving this care. Around two and a half thousand people did too. And what's more staggering is that this was all free. We didn't pay a penny, and that's why events um, that they do <laughs> and all the others that are around are so important because I think it's people that are at the heart of Loros. My nan passed away peacefully and we knew she was happy. From that moment I vowed Loros would always be part of my life and I wanted to do as much as I could. So what else can we do now? Ah, I need to shoot it in first. 